Now this is Kevin with ShutzandKevin.com and today we'll be tackling the flip about churn. Boom, boom. So the flip about churn is when you do your about churn and they stay on the left hand side and they don't go around the body. They stay on the left hand side and they have to pivot and move out of your way. So as you're going down the field, you're gonna turn left and then walk back down the same line that you were healing down on originally. So it's important for the dogs on this is to move out of your way. Common problem is everyone tries to do a little button hook or a short little circle and tighten it real tight to make it look like the dog's doing the about churn but really we want the dog to pivot with us and move out of the way, and then we go back down that center line. Problems are is the dog doesn't completely finish and go all the way parallel before the handler's going back down the field. This is done because in training, typically they'll just go the 180 about churn and the dogs will get lazy and you don't maintain that criteria of the full 180. So in training, it's really important on your about churns that we go over the 180. Typically I go about 270, uh, so this way the dog's muscle memory is to really swing their butt around and not start cutting it short at, you know, 150 degrees. To start off teaching this, typically, you know, with puppies, I've already taught them like the hand target food luring and how to move their rear end. Uh, so we have that food in our, our hand and we want to teach touching on that muzzle to get that rear end awareness. So we can do this in front and then in basic position and work a little bit on pivots. So with the puppy to teach the, the pressure, it's hand target, leash pressure. Yes, good boy. Good, close, good. Sit, so leash pressure close, good, yep. Good, important thing, it's on the nose and then we're pivoting the head with the leash pressure, yes, good boy. So important for this is that getting that head to churn and having your hand back along your pant seam, not out in front. That'll prevent them forging and it'll make a better about turn. So as we're going, hand back, pivot. And we want the dog to back up. All right, then push back. Don't let him push your hand forward. Good, yes. And then mark when he gives into it and goes away. As we're going, hand target, pivot. Good, yes. Hand target, pivot the head. Oh, good boy, you got it. All right, we got it again. Ready? Right. And then pushing that neck. Good. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, good boy. So on the nose, neck turns. But, and when we do this, we don't have your hand come out here. We want it to stay close against the body. Close, 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 close. Yes, good boy. So before that turn, it's important is we cue the dog. So I'll look left and then start my about turn. So it, to teach this, I'll look left and then I'll stay close. So as we're foosting, we'll have that hand target, look, tell them close, pivot, and then mark that butt swinging around. So it's important on this is that we have the right footwork. So common problem is people will come, do a quick spin and try and go back down the field and you're not giving the dog enough time to actually complete that about churn. So you can practice this. You don't have to get too worked up on the feet, but the biggest thing is we churn, and give them a second to turn around and get their butt in. So as we come down, you know, I'll look as I plant, tee my foot, tee it again, turn around and then start walking back the other way. So it's look, plant, pivot and walk. And it feels really slow, especially without your dog. So go back to that triangle healing. And then as I'm foosing, I'm gonna look, plant, tell them close. So look, close, 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 yes. And then once they're all the way in, mark and pay, or all, once they're all the way in, then I'll start walking forward again. And at first we wanna work on smoothness, not speed. The speed will come once the dog understands what we're expecting. So in the leash pressure is to teach them and give them that physical guidance of where we want that butt to go. So we go, look, leash pressure, swing their butt in, yes, and then pay. So that leash pressure, sit, push, it's pressure, good, sit. Leash pressure, good. Good. Close, close, good. So, foos. Look close, leash pressure, close, 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 yes. And then as we go, it's look, hand, leash pressure, yes. And the leash pressure is a cue to the dog, close, to swing their butt in. That's close, and a foos, good boy. 
Look, hand target pressure. Yes, good boy. Then adding corrections for this, really we don't want to re rely on the corrections, but we'll find sometimes the dogs are just a little bit slow. We'll pivot, if the butt's still hanging out, we can give some pressure, check, 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 and then mark them for moving that butt in. And then same thing with that pressure, when I add the e-collar to it, same thing, it's gonna be, look, close, Nick, pop on the leash, Nick, Nick, and then when the dog's moving their butt and actively moving really fast, we wanna mark that extra effort out of them and then pay them. We're going, look, plant pivot, oh, Nick, 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 good. Good, look, pivot, ah, Nick, Nick, good. And then we gotta get to where we're not relying on the pressure every about churn. So we do our about churn, they do it without needing the pressure, they're fast enough, we mark and pay. So we wanna mark and pay them for being fast. Good boy. Yes. Thanks for watching. I hope this will help you with your dog and your training. Don't forget to like, comment, and share below.